So for the next couple of videos, I'm going to try to shy a little bit away from PowerPoint because we're going to do a lot of derivations and I kind of prefer to write them down rather than typing them down. In this lesson, we're going to look at the del operator. The del operator is an operator that finds the gradient of a function. The gradient of a function is a change of a differentiable function with respect to space. Mathematically, we can define the gradient operator, also known as a del operator, also known as nabla, as del equals a partial change with respect to x times a unit vector in the x direction, a partial change with respect to y times a unit vector in the y direction, and a partial change with respect to z times a unit vector in the z direction. Now while this does look like a vector, this is actually an operator. It's not a vector. In order for this to become a vector, we need to apply this operator into a scalar. For example, if we define f as a scalar value, then applying the del operator to f gives us the gradient of f which is equal to the partial change of f with respect to x in the x direction. The partial change of f with respect to y in the y direction and the partial change of f with respect to z in the k direction. Applying this operator, the del operator, to a scalar value will give you a vector function. We can also apply the gradient operator to a vector valued function to create a scalar function. Let's look at an example. If I define f as a vector, I can apply the gradient operator and it's usually written as del dot f. The dot product, the so-called dot product of del dot f, will be equal to the partial change of the x component of this vector x with respect to the x variable, plus a partial change of the y component of f with respect to y, plus a partial change of the z component of x, f, with respect to z. Notice that by applying this operator to a vector valued function, our final answer is actually a scalar. There are no vectors in this function. Now this dot product formulation is actually a little bit misleading because this gradient operator is not a vector itself, but it's actually a function. However, if we were to follow the definition of the gradient operator as shown in this equation, then applying the dot product, like imagining that these are vectors and applying the dot product to a vector f and a vector nabla would give you this scalar. So these are two of the ways we can apply the gradient operators to scalars and to vectors respectively. However, there's more that we can do with this operator. We can create an operator to map a vector valued function to a scalar. Typically, this new operator is described as f dot del. Remember, these are not vectors. Del is not a vector, it's an operator. Therefore, del dot f is not the same as f dot l. Whereas del dot f is applying the del operator to a vector valued function to create a scalar, f dot l is creating a new operator. In this case, the new operator f dot l will take the function of the x component of your function f times a partial change with respect to the x direction. The f component, the y component of the function f times a partial change in the y direction and the z component of function f or vector f times a partial change with respect to z. Notice that this result is an operator. 
even though it looks like a scalar, it's not a scalar. So let me summarize what we have learned about the del operator. We have our initial operator. And if we apply the del operator to a scalar, we get a vector. If we apply the del operator to a vector, we get a scalar. And we can also create a new operator by joining a vector to the del operator. I'm trying to make this distinction between operators and vectors as clear as I can make them because we're going to see different forms of the del operator throughout our study of differential analysis. Now, I've talked a lot about mathematical terms, but I haven't really related this to fluids yet. So mathematically, we can relate the material derivative of the velocity vector to the del operator. Let's remember that the material de derivative was just the derivative that we used to find the acceleration of a fluid particle. And it consisted on the convective change and the local change in velocity. In other words, the material derivative was equal to the following expression. So how can we relate this expression for the material derivative to the del operator? Let's start by forming an operator by combining the velocity vector or the velocity field vector with the del operator. So let's begin by forming our new operator v dot del. Following this definition that we've already that we've already presented v dot del should be equal to the x component of my vector v, which we already know is called u, multiplied by a partial change with respect to x. The y component of my vector v, which we call little v, multiplied by a partial change with respect to y. And the z component of my vector v, which we call w, multiplied by a partial change with respect to z. This is our new operator that we form by combining the velocity vector and the del operator. If we apply this operator to a velocity field, we can say that v dot del applied to the velocity field v should be equal to this operator applied to this vector. Now what does that mean? The vector v, if we recall, consists of three components, an x component u, a y component little v, and a z component w. If we apply this operator to this vector, we should get the following. The operator says, u partial with respect to x and this will be the partial of the velocity vector plus v partial of the velocity vector with respect to y plus w partial of the velocity vector with respect to z now, if we look back at our material derivative, we'll see that our operator applied to the velocity vector is actually equal to the convective acceleration. That means that we can express our material derivative, derivative of v with respect to time, 
as equal to the convective change or just v dot nabla applied to v plus my local change or partial of velocity with respect to time. So this is another way that we will see the material derivative in the following lessons. Some books actually flip these two terms. So you'll have the material derivative as equal to the local change plus the convective change. But you know that that actually means the same thing. This operator v dot nabla applied to v can also be expressed as v dot del v. So we can say that v dot del v is equal to v dot del applied to v. The only reason I mention this is because we will see different forms of this operator throughout our derivations. However, following standard vector notation and vector rules, we'll see that v dot del v is actually equal to v dot del applied to v.